something amazing has happened. My eight-year-old daughter wants to learn how to play pool. Wait a minute. I've never taught a kid. Now this video is gonna be about as much me as it is my daughter Jilly learning to play the game because you will find out right away as a parent that we tend to overload them and take the fun out of the game. So there's that. I'm also gonna talk about the first few lessons I've had with her. We're also gonna look at some footage together and we will pick out the specific things that we wanna tackle first when we're trying to build her up. Also at the end, I'm gonna talk about maybe doing a series of these videos. So let's get her going. So as this video is being shot, I'm about three days in to actually playing with my daughter and showing her what I know about the game. What did I learn right away? When I first started teaching her as the loving parent, I decided that I was going to start at the basics, the fundamentals, start with the stance, the grip, the pendulum, how to feather, how to bend over, how to position yourself before the shot. I threw it all at her and it was a mess. I had overloaded her and she wasn't having very much fun. So right then and there, I realized that something's got to give here. I have to back off. I tried to remember back to my childhood on what made me enjoy this game. And really it was my brother and I went down into the basement, it must have been five, six, seven, and we just hit balls, you know? Somewhere along the line, we learned how to aim, but you don't do that at the start. At the start, you just try to hit balls. All right, let's take a look at some of the footage that I shot the other day of her and see if we can pick out the deficiencies in her game and maybe formulate a plan on what we can tackle one step at a time so that we don't overload her. Let's take a look at the first group of clips here. And what I want to show is the lack of feathering. So this is an easy thing to correct. So that will be part of our drill. See if you can find the commonality in this grouping of clips. There's one thing that she's doing throughout that can be easily fixed. If you guessed her getting up, actually her whole body after the contact, even her cue, everything coming up after the contact, you guessed right. So that's another thing that we can fix that's relatively easy. Check out after we had a little bit of a talk and a little bit of practice, how quickly she took to it. I didn't see a chalk. I'm trying to get her into a pre-shot routine, which is to walk over, center yourself, and to chalk that cue every time, then bend down, do the feathering, and then make your contact. These clips outline Jillian's placement of her elbow, not always over the cue where we want it, and then also that 90 degree on our pendulum that we're always looking for. And that comes from proper location of your grip. So that's another thing that we can work on. Again, I'm not gonna concern myself with how Jilly's feet are because adding that into the equation for a little girl who isn't quite tall enough anyway, it's too much. So overall, what are the four points we can take away from the footage? In conclusion, proper feather and tempo, Number two, staying down after the contact. That includes the cue and the body and the head. Number three, a pre-shot routine. That is walking up, looking, chalking, then bending down, feathering, and then making your contact. And then finally, the grip on the cue, and then also the elbow placement over the cue. I'm super impressed with how she's bridging, where she puts her thumb and she takes her index finger over. On the open bridge on the table, she does need to work on getting that index finger over and getting the thumb right up against the index finger to help guide her cue a little bit more. But from where she was day one to day three, 
it is light years. So very impressed. Okay, so taking a look at the deficiencies in my daughter's game, I've come up with a drill that I learned when I was 18, when I started taking the game a lot more seriously. I learned it from Cliff Thorburn's Snooker Techniques, the book that I was studying when I was that age. And all you need is a cue ball in your table. So let's go check it out. Okay, the drill, Cliff Thorburn's Snooker Techniques. All this drill attempts to do is work on your stroke. So what you do, put the cue ball, center of the table, we're gonna aim for that center diamond. After we make the hit, our cue stays there and we want that cue ball to come back and hit our cue. And it hit it. In a perfect world, you're actually getting it to stop on a dime. Just like that. So I've asked Jilly to come downstairs and at least do that five times at the beginning of her hitting balls and five times at the end hitting balls. And what does that do? Well, it identifies a number of the deficiencies that we talked about. So with all that being said, what's next? Well, since I took a look on YouTube and there aren't that many videos, showing how to instruct a child learning the game, I'm gonna make some videos. So when Jilly is ready to take the next step, maybe we'll shoot a video. It's gonna be small. Maybe it's just gonna be about the grip. Maybe it's gonna be about the pendulum, how your elbow should be placed. Maybe we will move on. Maybe she will grow and we'll talk about the footwork, how you should be standing, how you should be bending over, how you center yourself. There's a multitude of topics that we can talk about and make it fun for a child because we don't want to scare them away from the game. We want to keep it fun. Well, that's all I got for now. So please hit that subscribe button and the like button. It tells YouTube that you value what I do. And if you have an idea on a type of lesson that I can teach Jilly learning this game, please comment in the comment section and maybe that'll be one of the videos that we make. Thank you and until the next time. Not bad, keep trying. Whoa, you did it!